this is a um, another little CNC project that I just finished up. It's a couple of um, flowers that are made out of wood to hang on the wall just for decoration. I started the project with a piece of ash that I had harvested from my backyard and cut up. And um, I started by laying out three different flower patterns to kind of get an idea of which one will work out best for me. Once I got everything drawn up and programmed in, then it was just a matter of um, watching the router do the work for me. This is actually a project that could easily be done with some um, hand tools and like a jigsaw or bandsaw and a couple of chisels to carve things out too if you wanted to. And after cutting the three different designs out, uh, in the end I finally uh, decided to pick the last one that I cut and that would be the basis for my first flower. To go along with the flower, I figured that I would need a um, couple of leaves in the back of it. So I took a piece of quarter inch plywood and I cut a couple of leaves out to start out with. I used some spray red stencil dye and a little bit of clear rust-oleum spray on the flower and it came out looking pretty good. And so the next thing I had to do was cut out a center. I tried a piece of maple but I really wasn't happy with the first one. Then I put some green dot stain actually on the leaf and a little bit of that Rust-Oleum spray. And um, so I went back to cut out a different center. This time I figured I'd uh, cut a piece of walnut, cut a circle out of it with a pocket in it so I could um, easily chuck it in my lathe and shape it up a little bit. So after cutting it out, I um, threw the three jaw chuck on my lathe and I decided to shape the tip of it up a little bit, try to put a radius on it. And um, one thing you have to be careful of that I found out with a three jaw chuck is to um, not get too close to it because those jaws sticking out will take a chunk out of your finger. Finish turning it and then a um, little bit of sanding while in the lathe to polish it up a little bit and it came out pretty good. I'm happy with it. Now that I had the parts for the first flower done, I decided that I wanted to build the second one. So I started with a piece of cherry to cut the center out of. And um, as you can see on the one on the left kind of got destroyed. I got the router a vacuum hose jammed in it and uh, everything came to a standstill. But the second one came out fine. Then I went back and I took a piece of red oak that I had and I laid out a slightly different flower from the uh, one on the, the other one that I had done. And I tried to make this one look a little bit like a sunflower. Yeah, I was real happy with the way the this flower petals came out looking. So then I went on and I cut another um, backing piece for leaves. And I had the um, cherry center that I cut out first. So this one was going to be put together to be my second flower, which would kind of resemble a sunflower. So next I took that centerpiece and I went back over to the lathe with a three jaw chuck on it. And I chucked it up and I took that piece and I uh, turned just a uh, slight radius on the end of it to kind of soften it up a little bit. That cherry wood just smells so wonderful when you're turning it. And it cleans up really nice. Um, so I cut another one of the plywood backers for the leaves. And I stained it with mini wax green antique stain. And then I um, put some yellow paint on the, sun, on the oak piece for the sunflower. And the next thing that I needed to do was go back and take a piece of walnut. And cut out a couple of stems to uh, hold the flower heads up. For the first stem, I was lucky to find a piece of walnut that actually had grain that just about matched the um, the part that I cut out. The second one wasn't quite so I wasn't quite so lucky with, so I did have some cross grain in it, but it was a shorter one anyway. So here you can see uh, kind of what it's going to look like in the end. And next, I needed uh, some kind of flower pot to put them in. I figured. So I had a piece of spalted maple left over that had been cut in my backyard also. And I laid out a top rim and a bottom rim for the pot. And I cut that out on the router. 
And one thing I can say is having the CNC router now is really making me lazy because I just watched the machine cut everything for me. Um, next, I needed the center section for the pot. So I just took a, the other end of that piece of spalted maple and I cut it out. And at the same time, I cut a little bit of a design in it that I was going to place some marbles in later. Cutting open a maple tree and finding uh, spalted wood that looks like that is just so um, such a fun thing to do, and it's just amazing um, the patterns that you can find in the spalted maple, which basically is just maple that's starting to rot. Here we have the uh, three pieces cut out for the pot, and um, I use some black uh, marsh spray dye to spray the areas where the marbles are going in. Then I went back and just to hold everything together, I got my Craig jig out and I decided to put some pocket hole screws in there, which are the easiest, fastest way to do anything that I found out. And it only takes a couple of minutes to get all the holes located and drilled. The jig makes it so easy. And then I just took and I put a uh, little bit of glue on the mating areas and clamped it together with some clamps to keep it from slipping around. And went back and I put in um, four of those uh, short, I think they were one inch long pocket hole screws. And they pulled everything together real nice. So in the end, after everything was all screwed and glued together, I had myself a... Um, a piece of spalted maple that somewhat resembled a flower pot for the wall hanging. And I have found out that that marsh stencil ink is really a wonderful product to add some color to um, anything where you want to route pockets or you want to make a sign and um, color up the letters. It just works so simple and it sands right off quickly. So I I went back later and I actually cut out some more plywood leaves that I just did freehand on the bandsaw. And then I took a um, utility knife and I just scraped some lines in them to look kind of like the veins in the leaf. So um, I put them on, I mounted them on the stem. And I really am uh, happy with the way they came out looking like. Um, so the next thing I had was I had those holes that I put in a pot. And I went and I dug out a bag of marbles that I had when I was young. I think they're like from 1960. So the marbles will just be inserted in those five pockets for a little accent. Um, next, I went back and I put some counterboard holes in the stems and drilled a couple pilot holes in the back of the flowers. And then I was able to just insert a screw from the back that went through the leaf section and went through the flower section and then it went back and it um, screwed into the center section to pull everything tight, hold it in place. And I got the first one all screwed together and then the same thing for the second one. I had some pre-drilled holes that I just put the screw in and did the same thing to assemble this one. And um, it really worked good to hold everything together and it gives it kind of a sense of relief when you look at it having everything at different levels which i really like so with the, the stems all put together and the flower heads next thing i had to do is i had to drill some dowel holes up in the bottom of each stem and i just did them by eye and then i took some uh, dowel centers they call them and you put them in the hole that you drilled and you just line them up where you want the parts to line up and push down and leave an indent so you can locate the dowel hole so I uh, drilled the dowel holes and I went back and I just took some uh, wood glue and I glued everything together and um, it held it together real good and it's, it's starting to look just like the flower pot and flowers that I wanted. And the last thing to do was to put the marbles in the little pockets that I made. I had to go through the bag of marbles and measure them out because they were all different sizes. And then I just went back and I took and put a drop of super glue in the bottom of each hole. And the marbles fit in really nice and snugly. So um, with a little bit of polyurethane actually made the hole small enough. So you just had to tap them in place and uh, they would stay. So I put two yellow ones in there and then I added five more green ones and just tapped them in. And that's basically it. 
and um, I think they look pretty good in there along with the uh, little bit of black outline just to break it up a little bit. So there's pretty much what you see the finished um, flower assembly. Um, it has the pot on the bottom and then it just has the walnut stems with plywood leaves. Um, there's a uh, ash flower on the one side with a walnut center. Then there is a oak flower with a cherry center on the other side. So there is quite a selection of wood, which all was harvested from my backyard. And basically the last thing that we have to do is just decide on a place to hang it. But we're working on that now and I'll um, show you a picture of it after it's hanging from the wall. And thanks for watching. Please subscribe.